I'm about bringing together, I think, the collective intelligence of Papua New Guinea to bear on the problem. I'm not about the one-man show. I don't run my province myself. You know, I've got professionals everywhere, and they do the work. Let me first of all take this opportunity to welcome all those who have moved from the government to join us in the opposition. As leader of the opposition, I was acting yesterday uh, for their in that meeting this morning. I was uh, elected as the uh, appointed, should I say, as the uh, leader of the opposition. Next to me, on my right, is the uh, deputy opposition leader, who was appointed also in the meeting this morning, and that is none other than uh, Mr. James Kumar, Honorable James Kumar. I would like to use this time to say thank you to the senior leaders who we think should be taking this role, but they have seen there is a need for new, fresh leadership in the opposition, and not only in the opposition, but maybe in every facet of uh, leadership that we should be looking at grooming young leaders. And I think yeah, yeah, yeah. So today, uh, we have my colleague here, James Amari, who's been uh, appointed as the deputy opposition leader, and I myself as the opposition leader. And we are thankful, again, for the opportunity to lead. And with the concurrence of the leaders that we have here, party leaders, the governors, and the open members, it is my great pleasure to announce to the people of Papua New Guinea to announce to all our public servants, working class people, yeah, our people in the, yeah, no, in the villages, no, 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 no. right throughout this, uh, to the highlands of Papua New Guinea, to the coast, we are proud to announce as a team in the opposition that the uh, Honorable Governor of East City Province is our nominee for... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Um, to the media and let me speak to our people of Papua New Guinea. Uh, this morning when I woke up, I did not expect to be the nominee, uh, to be quite honest. And uh, I mean, I didn't even have a party last week. I'm, I'm an independent member of parliament, but I'm very grateful to this uh, group of leaders that are here. This morning, two former prime ministers, two former deputy prime ministers, and a caucus of opposition MPs in their wisdom uh, chose me uh, to be their nominee. Um, I'm not going to lie to any of you. I think Papua New Guineans have always expected me to be forthright and honest. I've been in government hoping to make a difference. I've made many, many suggestions. I've served on several com com committees, as many of you know, and all because I wanted what was good for Papua New Guinea, for all Papua New Guineans. And as time went on, a lot of the things that some of us were hoping for in 2019, I did not see eventually. And one of the things that was always used to hold people like me in government was that, look, Pidao Nil is on the other side. And you shouldn't go across for many, many reasons. But then I have to weigh that up against the situation that many Papua New Guineans face themselves with. I mean, you just said on the floor, we are sending kids to school. 70,000 children are going to finish school this year. Parents, relatives are getting phone calls, members of parliament are getting text messages so that we can all put together money to send more kids to school. I asked that question today because I worry about what's going to happen to those kids when they finish school. Where are the jobs for them? Here? This is not a new question. Now, I want to think that if leaders are honest and we sit down and, you know, Stop the nonsense about relaxing. The problem is we have 5% inflation running every year. So if you're wondering why food is more expensive for you in the shops, it's because of inflation. By this year, there will be 30% cumulative inflation. And our people are going to face that. They talk about the economy growing. But we are actually talking about what we call nominal GDP. Yes, nominal GDP is growing. But real GDP is declining because of this effect of inflation we keep talking about, which we don't talk about in Parliament. Now, as Papua New Guineans begin to hate more and more, like me, you know, some of the leaders had to talk to me this morning and say, look, you have to put your hand up. And I was quite reluctant, uh, you know, with the other candidates, my two big brothers. But then I thought, you know, me man no complain, no, this no something. Me complain, no opposition, me complain inside, no government. Well, then maybe it's my opportunity to get together with like-minded people 
and let's fix the problem. Yeah. Honestly, I have nothing against uh, the Honorable James Marape, you know, John Russell, the Deputy Prime Minister is my good friend, Mr. Stuckey. You know, I'm not going to say that. But, you know, when you go out there and meet our people and you see the strong sound, you feel. I feel guilty. I really do feel guilty. I can't pretend that uh, things are going well for our people. And so, I want solutions. And I think all of us here want solutions. Yes. And so when you see my name uh, put forward, I think of myself just as the tip of the spear. The spear is everyone behind us, not just these members of parliament, but their constituents. All of us that want a fair deal. I want Papua New Guinea to work. And I'm, all of our leaders, all of you, we all want Papua New Guinea to work. We want a future for our children here in this country. But the way we are going, can anyone honestly say that the future is looking bright? I mean, apart from middle of member of parliament, people are praising me play yet now, worshiping me play yet now. I'm asking me play yet for Kamiya. The majority of Papua New Guinea are feeling the pain. It doesn't matter which part of the country you're from. And so I think this group and those of us who have been discussing these things, this group of leaders, we are about resetting everything. I, I want what I call a hard reset. We've been doing things a certain way for 49 years now, and it hasn't worked. And we know what, for the majority of public unions. So do we continue doing it the same way and expecting that the result is going to be different? I think not. I think we need to change it. I mean, people in Port Mosby are complaining about no space at the main hospital. And we announce a record budget. And there's still no second hospital for NCD. I'm sure Governor Pakop and his team of leaders would like to have the money and they would like to make the call to build their own hospital for the people of NCD. So we need a new deal for Papua New Guinea. We need to change how we are doing business. It's not about James Marabe or Alan Bird or government or opposition. It's about our people. You can come. I mean, you saw what we did today. Parliament got a bit lively, members of parliament making jokes. But what happens when we go back? We are all building roads, bridges, and classrooms, ladies and gentlemen. But is that really changing the lives of our people? Is it changing it for the majority? And these are hard questions that we should be asking. Every single group and community in Papua New Guinea deserves a fair go in their own country. All of us do. And when I look at a 27 billion kina budget, I see energy for development, but I see it all misdirected. I think that if we can direct that energy, the problem is in the arrangements. One man wants to do everything. We want to do everything from Port Mosby. Now we've been doing that to death and it hasn't worked. And I think smart Papua New Guineans everywhere will agree that we need to change that. So I say again, it's not about me. You heard me on the floor say at one point, look, enough of criticizing the Honorable Peter O'Neill. He had his turn in the chair. We can go back and criticize every single Prime Minister. I don't want to do that. I don't want to criticize the Honorable James Murabe. But I think the problems of our country deserve a serious look, serious actions. And we need to come out and tell our people, if we are not succeeding in these things, then you meet Dr. Sorry, me not make me a please. Not man, you come and make I think we need to be honest, and I don't think we are. We are pretending that everything is okay, or things are just going to get better miraculously because I'm waking until 2 in the morning, so you know what I'm looking at me, I talk stuff, yeah? But they are probably going to still doing it tough regardless of how many hours we are all putting in. So it's not the number of hours. It's not the size of the budget. It's about how we are doing it. And that needs to change. So whatever reasons they have, I am really humbled. I, I didn't expect it this morning, as I said. I didn't, I, I've always been a bit of a rebel. You might look cross even Mr. Uh, and, you know, for everyone to decide that, you know, perhaps a rebel should be the one that comes in and changes everything. Yeah. So that was a decision they took. I was going to say no, I was going to decline and continue. But then I thought, well, you know, years ago, and if you don't mind, I'd drag you back. Um, the Grand Chief was Prime Minister. My name came up as one of those that should be uh, one of the 12 working on the Vision 2050. And Sefuka took it to Cabinet. And when my name got mentioned in Cabinet, everyone looked at Grand Chief. They were wondering what his response would be. He turned around and said, a man block giving me plenty heavy Put him in and you'll be looking. I mean, I'm not making one of that. So I think uh, this morning when these leaders made the decision, I felt the same way. I felt like everyone was saying, okay, you man, we'll talk plenty. We'll have to put him in the front and see what he can do. I'm about bringing together, I think, the collective intelligence of Papua New Guineans to bear on the problem. I'm not about the one-man show. I don't run my province myself. You know, I've got professionals everywhere, and they do the work. And this morning, you know, when the call came from uh, this group of leaders, 
out of respect for them and out of great humility and in fact like I'm really humbled that my peers, people I respect uh, would bestow upon me this opportunity. Now I know that we won't succeed if our colleagues don't cross the floor. So I want to speak to my colleague MPs on the other side. Suppose you're like, I'm a Muslim, we country is wrong. You're like, what in one kind of thing? Amorai. Never start no position. You know, man will move nothing. And if I have to stay in opposition until 2027 and continue to highlight these issues, I'll do so. I didn't move because someone offered me a bag of money or a car or house or anything like that. I left because civics have been complaining and asking me to leave for over a year. Plan the civic on to go, thank you, finally, you your. So, you know, these civics are, they don't let you rest if they feel that something is wrong. I come from a unique electorate. From civic back, complain, complain. Legally, pothole come up all back, complain. I went to Lay and I saw this pothole from Nazab all the way to, I don't know that place, but Bunbaksad, Lomi, close to Lucy, and I thought, my goodness. Civic here, legally, pothole come up for one month, or a civic complain. All more way, in pen, close to 10 years of passing house and stuff. But that's the kind of electorate, the kind of people I represent. Every single civic will complain when something is wrong. And I bear the brunt of those criticisms. No got power, all blaming me. Police no work, all blaming me. Over the sunny no work, all blaming me. And then I realized, well, that's a civic way. Or sometimes I come and complain here too. Because I respond very quickly when my people get upset about something. It's just in my nature. So I'm really grateful that the leaders of Papua New Guinea have appointed me for such a task at such a time. Uh, we're going to give it our best shot, and I hope we are successful. <laughs> but again, that will depend very much on our friends on the other side. If you are happy, you know, like with great respect, uh, the good Prime Minister has been running our country for four and a half years now. By June, it will be five years. And I asked him a question today for him to tell us how he has progressed. Uh, no Prime Minister is going to have an easy task. No one is going to have an easy run. It's all difficult from here. So my worry is, are things going to change between now and 2027? Or are they going to be more difficult by 2027? That's what I'm worried about. We cannot continue to push problems onto future generations. You've seen me raise issues around the debt, not just the normal debt that we are publishing, but debt that's sitting all over the place. You know, At some point, that debt is going to find its way onto our total debt. We haven't done population yet. And I'm worried about why it's being delayed. Because Personally, I think when we find out our real population and you calculate it against something we call the uh, uh, per capita GDP, that is GDP per percent, and by drop below 3,000 US dollars. When it drops below that, then the whole world will classify us as a poor, underdeveloped nation. And I suspect that's why population numbers are not down, because we are trying to hide the country. We can't keep doing that. We've got to admit our real situation and we've got to fix it. And really, it's up to the members of parliament. You can fight in Bros. Nato, you got number, but is your number going to fix the cost of living crisis? Is your number going to fix the unemployment crisis? Is your number going to fix law and order? If your number is going to fix all of these problems, then fine, we respect you. And we will continue to hold you accountable. But if you having a big number is not going to help the ordinary Papua New Guinean on the street or their children, then perhaps you need to rethink your position. It's not about us. It's not about me and my fellow leaders here. It's not about our colleagues in government. It's about you. And we should always be making our decisions based on you and not just you. The children that you have, the future that you want. And this is the thing that I think we should be doing. And it shouldn't be about a personality cult and a prison worship. We need to stop that nonsense. So I think I've spoken too long. Uh, but once again, uh, let me just thank all of you. Thank you for your